Hey everyone, welcome back for another SANS ICS Security Brief. I'm Dean Parsons, Certified Instructor for ICS 515, Co-Author and Instructor for ICS 418. Today I want to talk a little bit about the Purdue model, specifically what it is, how we can use it, and of course how to add security to it. So let's jump right into today's content. Again, this is the review of the Purdue model inside control system environments. The idea is to understand what it is and how it can help with ICS defense for today. Today. Now, way back in the 90s at Purdue University is where the Purdue model was actually came to be. The idea back then and even today is a best practice for logically representing and zoning devices and technologies in ICS environments from the OT and IT environments. Uh, and each level labels engineering devices and systems and technologies. But security must be added at boundary zones for these devices to perform active defense. Now, here are some ICS devices, as we see here, which can be anything from embedded controllers, uh, IEDs, for example, intelligent electronic devices, alarm servers, Windows OT devices, engineering workstations, and of course, PLCs, RTUs, even serial devices as well. So the idea is to use the Purdue model with this image and logically represent them in a more logical structure, but figure how we can add security as we logically represent this in a more uh, approved architecture, if you will, for today's standards. Looking at the different levels of the Purdue, we're going to start with the level four and level five, the enterprise level where you're going to find typically the IT business network, possible external facing web services on the business network, even email systems, ERP systems, such as your enterprise resource planning system, also your MES, your manufacturing and execution system as well. Things like work order management, product shipping, logistics, billing, and things of this nature. Again, at the IT level in the business or enterprise level at level four or level five. Going down through the Purdue closer now into the control environment, we see level 3.5, level three. Level 3.5 could be considered your industrial control system, demilitarized zone or DMZ, usually where you're going to find applications and services for OT or ICS, like your data historian, possibly with IT access from the enterprise, and also possible remote access, and jump boxes at this level as well. Common protocols can also be seen at level 3.5, but as we go down through the levels deeper inside the ICS, more and more less common protocols and more ICS specific and even proprietary protocols as well. At level three is your SCADA operations, possibly still historians at this level as well, but ICS site-wide regional SCADA at this level, possibly even an OT specific active directory, always a great idea. Uh, also your OT patch services as well, possibly for your Windows OT devices using WSUS, but also things like satellite or something similar for patching Linux boxes, which are all at this case, Windows and Linux OT assets. Going further down the Purdue in level two, this is your control system area where you have control devices like your human machine interfaces possibly running on Windows OT devices. They will interact with controllers, PLCs in level one. Also alarm servers at level two, in this case, engineering workstations, operator workstations, of course, as well. Again, possibly used to view the process, possibly do change or program the controllers at level one. An example in this particular level and the different assets used and seen here with the protocols is an engineering operator is gonna be sending out commands from the HMI, human machine interface at level two, possibly from an OT asset, of course, and on that control network, it was going to be industrial protocols. Also through a possible OPC service as an example, but various other types of protocols will be seen and also communicating at level two, possibly even down of course to level one to those PLCs, programmable logic controllers at level one. So an example of this will be a PLC running ladder logic or some other code for the control system. And of course this code will be run in the PLCs to sense and understand the physical state of an engineering environment or process. Then possibly sending signals to the engineering field devices at well in lower levels of the Purdue such as at level zero, 
to change the state of the physical environment, such as an actuator being moved in the real world through a, uh, the use of an RTU or something similar, making those changes in the real world. A prime example of this would be something like an open breaker or close breaker command at an electric substation to energize or de-energize power to a region. So critical at this particular case. And again, as we go down lower in the Purdue, more and more specific engineering protocols uh, and industrial control system protocols. Moving now into level one of the Purdue, here's again where we see those controllers. Those controllers are PLCs that directly interact with the engineering devices at level zero, directly deciding and executing changes for the physical world. At this level as well, you're going to see, of course, your PLCs, remote terminal units as well, intelligent electronic devices, et cetera. Again, uh, changing the environment, using devices, interacting with devices at level zero in the Purdue. This is the physical process. The sensors are at this particular level, the physical engineering devices in the field, electronic sensors, switches, relays, pumps, valves, actuators, depending on your ICS type and what sector you're in, et cetera. Again, making those changes that are critical when monitoring, changing, and making sure that safety is in place in in the field in the engineering environment. Beyond this as well, again, looking at the Purdue levels, just generically here at the upper levels, we do see those traditional technologies. As we talked about, can the uh, common protocols, common operating systems, still an OT or ICS asset though. And of course, as you go down below that, more specific applied or adapted operating systems, embedded operating systems, industrial control protocols, engineering hardware assets, specific security controls for ICS and OT as well, and of course, safety. So you're thinking, great, now I know a little bit about the logical layout of an ICS environment. That's fantastic, but we cannot stop there. So far using the Purdue, we do have a logical zoning or representation of engineering devices. Awesome. However, security should now be applied to these zones. So we can use the Purdue model and add this to make sure we have security at major and minor enforcement boundaries. This of course is the ICS 410 SCADA reference model and this adds security to the Purdue model, not just only logical, but making sure we have security built in. An example is at the top here, we have a major enforcement boundary here between the ICS DMZ level three or level 3.5, depending. And of course the enterprise, which could be level uh, four or level five, depending on your architecture. This of course, we have the business environment pulling from or pushing to the ICS DMZ, not lower levels in the Purdue model at this case here. Beyond the first uh, enforcement boundary, we have another major uh, enforcement boundary where we have controls being secured between the control network and the ICS DMZ, where the control network pulls from or pushes to the ICS DMZ. Not stopping here is another enforcement boundary here for security to be added, such as things like firewalls and ACLs being utilized here, of course, as well, specific designed ICS switches and so on. This, of course, is looking at traffic between the ICS network and the plant supervisory control, so a plant-wide SCADA environment. ACLs or routers or layer three switch or firewall can be utilized here. Certainly last but not least is air gapping and separating out your safety instrumented systems, your active safety instrumented systems, utilizing PLCs and actuators to ensure that your process is safe in a fail safe condition. The systems will be shut down in a regulated way, preserving safety and reliability of people at the plant but of course your assets and process as well. So to recap, looking at the Purdue model, it's really a great way to start logically representing your ICS devices. Logical separation, a great logical layout of the devices in your control environment, but security of course must be added as we just mentioned. So that's all the time we have for today. Super great that you were able to spend this few minutes with me today to go over uh, this uh, ICS security brief and hoping to see you in class again soon. Thank you.